All right, welcome back. Let's keep rolling through the ages, shall we? Which, by the way, is an excellent dice game, but that would be a topic for another day. Okay, so first of all, I just realized I was an idiot. On Jen's last turn, I did have her, you know, increase her culture, increase her science, but I didn't have her actually produce goods and stuff. So, just uh, rewinding, on the end of Jen's previous turn, she had generated two food for her two farms and two bronze for her two. So this is what she really starts with. So dumb. Okay, so beginning of her turn, all the stuff's come in, and let's see what she's gonna do. Well, she uh, she she didn't get a military card that she could play as an event, which would have been a colony or an event card. So she's gonna skip that part. She's really not happy about it. That was a bit of bad luck getting the cavalry because you know this is a this is a great thing, but she needs before she can actually benefit from this, she would have to get the she would have to learn the technology to get cavalry, and then she'd have to train three cavalry, which is going to take a long time before she could benefit from this. So, eh, bit of bad luck. Say lovey. So, Jen's got, oopsie, four actions. What's she going to do? Alrighty, well, remember, she got these actions last turn. I guess she's going to want to take advantage of them. She got them last turn, she'll play them this turn. First of all, she's going to play her frugality, which lets her increase her population for full price, and then basically produce one. So she gets it for half price. So she's gonna increase her population. Comes from down here, it costs two food. Boop, boop. But then the frugality says, hey, take one of them back. So it really only costs one, but she did have to be able to pay. So now she's got extra workers lying around. What the heck, for her second action, she'll, she'll discover some rich land, which lets her build a new mine or farm and pay one less than normal. So she want, I mean, she's got these two guys, so either guys could be a farm or a, farm or a mine. Let's see, uh, need more food to, you know, to basically generate more food so you can uh, make your population bigger so you can do more stuff. But I think she's gonna go for a mine instead. A mine! Let's see, build a new mine or farm for one less. So, this was the action she played. So she's gonna build a new mine. Here's her third mine. Normally it costs two, but this one only costs her one thanks to the rich, bountiful land she found. Now she's got two more actions and two more military actions. So now she's got enough left over, she could hire some more warriors. Or while she's got this worker left over, she should have that worker do something. Hmm, let's see, well, she is. She's gonna have that, she, this guy's not gonna sit around shiftless and lazy, because she's got, I think she's gonna spend her ore. Oh, interesting. Or is she gonna save it up? No, no, no. She's going to train this guy for a third action to, yeah, what the heck, she's going to go into the religion business. Alrighty. So now this costs three ore, which is her last ore. One, two, three. So all her ore is used up, but she now has a temple. And a temple increases her happiness, which I haven't talked about yet, but it's very, very important. You'll, uh, you'll notice... What, basically what would happen is, there's all these things down here. If Jen hired these two people and never increased her happiness, one of the people would be, instead of coming over here into the worker pool, it would come down here to be unhappy. It's still a worker she could assign, but she runs the risk of revolt. But, since Jen's now gotten some religion, she can hire these guys, and these guys, and these guys, without having to worry about happiness because the opening of the masses is in full effect. So anyway, so Jen, because she's gotten one temple, which cost her three ore, she's increased her happiness, and she's also increased her culture potential. She's a more cultured society. What with Homer, with his poems about heroism, and her religion, she now earns three victory points every turn. Okay, so that was... Over her actions over. She played the two cards and then she built a temple. Now she has one more action and two military actions. And now again, these military actions, she doesn't have any more resources, so she's not gonna, she could fire these guys, she doesn't wanna fire them because that would reduce her culture. So she's going to have her last action, I guess, once again, be to draw a card. And let's look up here. Now she can't afford any of the more expensive ones. She can't take any leaders because she already has, oh no, well, no, she can't because these are still antiquity leaders. Once the new era leaders, the Middle Ages leaders come out, she could replace them, but she can't take those guys. So she can get the invent invention of drama, bread and circuses, or iron. And as you can see, they cost different. Iron costs five ideas, bread and circuses cost three, drama costs four. Jen currently has three ideas. She is smart enough to, you know, to get this, and if she had four ore, she could build it, and then that, you know, or not, if, if, if she, she could spend her three ideas to get the technology, and then she could spend four ore to actually build an arena, 
which would increase her military might and increase her happiness. She's already got religion for happiness and she's already got military might, so I don't think she wants that. Drama is more expensive, requires four ideas. Five or it's very expensive to build a theater, I guess, with all those fancy trap doors and stuff. But once she has built one of them, she, that theater starts generating two culture every turn and happiness. So that's nice. But I think Jen's going to go another way. She's going to take the iron mine, which once she builds it, and it takes five ideas. So it's going to be a little while before she can do it because she doesn't have much in the way of science. She's building up slowly, but eventually she'll be able to discover iron mines. And then over time, she could build iron mines, which cost five ore, or she can upgrade her bronze mines to iron, which would cost three because it's five minus two would cost three. So she can upgrade for three. So that's what she's taking. She's taking it into her hand because she, all right, so that was her fourth thing. All righty, there's Homer singing a song. All right, and those are her four actions. As a despot, she's still got two military. She didn't do them, so now at the end of her turn, she generates. And remember, Jen's got a lot of culture. She gets one, two, three points. One, two, three. She is catching up to my big work of art. She also gets one science. And now, I won't forget this time, her two farms generate two food. Her three mines generate three ore, or three resources. And again, she doesn't have to worry about corruption or consumption yet. And now, she didn't use these two militaries, so she gets to draw two military cards, and hopefully she gets something better. Ah, Raiders, and, ah, this is a better tactics card, Medieval Army. Th to get a Medieval Army, well, she still needs to get cavalry, she still needs to research cavalry, but if she has one cavalryman, a cavalryman plus a warrior would give her an army, which would increase her by two. So that's a little bit better for her than the cavalry, but more importantly, she got Raiders. The two weakest civilizations, or in a two-player game, the one, you know, in a, a two-player game, they wouldn't be both of them. So, the, so if Jen stays ahead of me in, pa in terms of power, when this comes comes around, I will lose a total of two ore and or food, my choice. And Jen's army will have protected her, so I'll be the one hit by the raiders. So she's now got an event that she can feed into the queue. And she's got this that she could build. And again, her military hand size, which is a maximum of two, is over, but she'll have to discard next turn. So that was her turn. Back to me, back to my turn. Nobody wants Caesar, nobody wants Hammurabi. Bye-bye. New stuff comes down. Cheap, cheap, cheap. New stuff comes out. A wor another work of art. Oh, this one's not as nice. This one is only five points instead of six. So it's a lesser work than my great work. Uh, mineral deposits. You immediately get to, oh, that's very nice. Because resources are so tight. You need so many resources to do much stuff. That's going to be, somebody's going to want to grab that. I don't know if it's worth actually spending three actions to get, but it's worth spending two to get. And theocracy, ah, the first new, we could, if somebody gets this, they could spend some science, either two or seven, to replace despotism with a theocracy. And what's the difference? Well, you still only get four civic actions, but now you get three military actions. I guess theocracy lends itself towards war. I don't know if you want to take this, you know, whatever statements the designer wanted to make, theocracy leads to war, go figure. And it also means you can have up to three of a building type instead of two. So you could have three temples, or three labs, or three printing presses instead of two, if you get a theocracy. But it's, you know, you need science. You either need two science, um, well, uh, well, I'll talk about that later. You need seven science to, to peacefully get a theocracy. You need a lot of learning to upgrade from a despotism to a theocracy. Or if you do a revolt, you could do it with only two learning, but you would blow your entire turn. Maybe we'll do that later. All right, so that's what's come out. My turn, first thing I do, I'm going to do another event because I've got a few. This border conflict is still bad for me. If I put it in, well, I'll score a point, but I really need to get some more military or this will benefit Jen. And more importantly, it'll hurt me. So I'm going to put in this, this colony instead and we'll see if it comes up. And, you know, because remember, I have a secret hidden bonus for colonization, so maybe I'll surprise Jen with it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do an event. Jen doesn't know what it is. It comes in here. I score one point. I, because basically what this means is our society is starting to explore and sooner or later we will discover this developed territory. Okay, and of course because a new one's been put out, a new one happens. What is it? The development of warfare. Each player with an unused worker may immediately build a warrior for free. Oh, and Jen is very sad about that. Very sad. Okay, I'm going to take advantage of this. Each player with an unused worker. So I'm just going to build. Hey, boom, I've got a warrior for free. Jen and I are tied. Jen is pissed, though, because she had no workers left over. 
So she can't do it. So this just passes her by. And that would, uh, so we're tied on warfare. Suddenly that border conflict is looking a little bit more tasty. Alrighty. So anyway, I've done that. And now it's my turn. New stuff is out. I've got my, all my actions. Let's go. Well, first of all, remember, in a previous generation, we discovered some engineering genius. So I think in this generation, we're going to put it to work. I'm going to, that's my first action. Build one stage of a wonder and pay two less than normal. So that's gone. I'm going to build my last stage. And normally it would cost me three, but two less means it only costs me one. And dun, 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 I have completed the mighty Colossus. These come back over here. It's untapped to indicate that I now have a Colossus. And a couple things happen. I am now earning culture. Not as much as Jen, but I'm still starting to earn some culture. And my military might has increased. Oh, whoopsie, 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 whoopsie. I have not been reporting that. Jen has two military. I should have improved this a while ago. I have two military because of my Colossus, or because of my two guys. And now I've got a third one. So I am actually in the lead on military. Totally forgot to put that marker. I would have updated it when it was important, when we had to compare stuff. But anyway, so I'm in the lead on military now because I've got two warriors and Colossus. Everybody's scared of me. And I have an additional bonus. For the point of colonization, I get plus one. So now it's interesting. I get plus one for the colonization, but this, this is a straight up military thing. This improves my strength, but it can't be used towards colonization. But this secret, this, this other colonization can. And don't forget, I've got the other colonization. So I'm very excited. I have suddenly gone from zero to hero in the ancient world. But it took me a while to do it. And meanwhile, Jen's been doing other stuff. She's got religion. She's got, um, oh yeah, she's got more culture from Homer, etc., etc. So that was my first action. Hooray! And now I could get another wonder because I finished the first one. And in fact, look, there's a couple of cheap wonders. There's the Great Wall and there's the uh, Universitas Carolina, which I've never heard of. I'm sure it's wonderful though. It's going to it's nine resources to build. It'll take me a while. And it, uh, but it increases my science by two. So we will be much smarter. Look at that guy. Doesn't he look smart? It's a big old university. It's an ancient, wonderful university. But it'll take a long time to build. Yeah. This other one is the Great Wall. Which, um, which is three, four, seven, eight, nine. Oh, they're both nine. So they're both cost nine. But this one takes four turns. As opposed to three turns. But it's in smaller chunks, so it's easier. Um, <clears throat> one victory point in turn, like the other, and one happiness. And I'm not worried about happiness yet. I haven't really been hiring very many people, unlike Jen. But, you know, I'll have to worry about that eventually. And adds one to your strength for every infantry you've got and artillery, which we don't have yet. So my strength would increase even more. But here's the tricky thing. Because I already have one, you know, you would think it would only cost me one action to take these guys, but because I have one wonder, every, uh, my second wonder will cost me whatever plus one. So the more wonders I take, the more it costs me to build additional wonders. So I don't know if I want to use my other three. I'd have to use two actions to get another wonder. Ah, but, you know, that could be my society. It could be all about that, all about the ancient wonders of the world. Well, first of all, here's one problem. I'm starting to stockpile a lot of food. I need to start using this food because if I stockpile too much, I'm going to start facing corruption. So I think my second action is going to be, I, since I unexpectedly got some warriors, I'm going to increase my population, which costs me two food because I don't want to stockpile my food too much because that's bad. That's my second action. Now, I've got a guy. Do I want to put him somewhere? I could put him because I've got three. I could do these things or do I... Yeah, with that, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be Mr. Wonders. When when you think of our society, you think of all the great wonders we did. So I'm gonna spend two to get one of these because I have to pay an additional to start my second wonder. The Great Wall or the University? Do I give do a value science or happiness and military more? Um, I'm gonna don't need a lot of science to build wonders, so I'm gonna value happiness. Could use workers more. So, and this comes in tapped, because I built this, but I haven't built this, and I'm gonna start working on that. And those are all four of my actions. Now, I've still got two more military actions. I could train a warrior. I've got enough resources. I could train a warrior. Or I could fire, you know, I fought, this guy I got for free. I could fire him right now, and spend one of my actions, so I could put these guys in a farm or a mine, which is gonna benefit me more. If I fire him, I'd lose one on my military, but I'd still be tied with Jen because I've got my Colossus. Mm. Don't want to do that. Mm. 
Well, no, I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it for now. It's fine. So that just means we're going to draw two more military cards. Okay. So those are all my actions. And now we, um, so, hey, I've got some culture. So I, I get one point. Hey, got some science. Just one measly point. We're not very smart. We just build big things that take us many, many years. And on that and that. Okay, we get two more food. Three more goods. Okay, and we're getting close to corruption. And, but we don't have it yet. And then I get to spend my, la my military actions to do anything else. So I get to draw two more military cards. And I got rats. Each civilization, ooh, nobody wants to play this. Lose all your stored food. But if I know this is coming, remember, playing this will score me a point. And if I know this is coming, I can always make sure I'm out of food and it won't hurt me. Or I can just not play it. Immigration. All civiliz uh, this civilization or civilizations with the most happy faces gens ahead of me on happy faces. I'll get a happy face for the Great Wall. I have to think about that later. Okay. That was the end of my turn. Jen's turn. Drama and bread and circuses are forgotten. They had their chance. They blew it. <clears throat> One. Alchemy, which is an upgrade to philosophy. Joan of Arc. Hey. Jen could replace Homer with Joan of Arc because she's a level one. Could replace an actor. I see your temples, which Jen actually has a temple, gives you plus one strength for each of their happy faces. Ah, so Jen's so Joan of Arc. The more religion she has, not surprisingly, the more military strength she's got. And every time there's an aggression or war, you score five. Now, in a friendly game, that's not quite as cool because no one will ever attack Jen. Hmm. Well, anyway, interesting. And oh, Michelangelo, maybe more interesting. Your temples, which Jen has, and your theaters, which nobody's built a theater yet. There was that drama, but nobody got it. Uh, and, and your wonders, which Jen doesn't have, so I'm interested in this because I'm going to have two wonders, produce an extra culture for each of their happy faces. So this great wall would produce two. It costs one less civil action to take a wonder card. Ooh, I like that. All right, anyway, it's Jen's turn. Okay, now she is going to play a military card. And she's actually she's gonna have to play one. Oh no, she plays one, she wants to discard. She will put this Raiders, and she's gonna make sure before Raiders come about that she's back on top of military so that it will benefit her. That goes in, she scores one point, and whatever the third antiquity event is, development of markets. Every civilization produces two goods or two food, your choice. Okay, so Jen, does she want two goods? Or, well, let's look at mine first. I don't think I need any more food. I'm gonna take two goods. Because I got wonders to build. What's she gonna do? Two food, two food, food. She can't, it can't be one and one. Well, if she wants more food, so she could expand more. She's got the happy face, so she could get more workers. But I think she'll take the two goods as well, so that she's got more brawn, so she can do, build more stuff. So that was nice. The development of markets helped everybody, and they all just go. Oh, actually, oopsie, I forgot. I'm supposed to be putting these in the past events. I always forget that. I always just throw it in my big dump of cards. Let's put them back where they're supposed to be. So, the order of them was, first we developed trade routes, then we developed warfare, then we developed the markets. So it's kind of like tells the history of the world. All right, those are our past events. Silly me. And this is all the stuff we, you know, is gone. All right, it's my turn, right? No, it's Jen's turn, Jen's turn, Jen's turn. All right, well, let's see, what's she gonna do? She gets all her actions back now. Uh, let's see. Now, okay, so she set herself up for an iron mine. But to do this, she's not smart enough. She needs five ideas. She's only got four. At the end of her turn, her science will push it back over the top. So next turn, she'll be able to start building iron mines, which will increase her production. And so maybe she doesn't want to use very much bronze, so she saves some of it. But she knows she's going to generate three. So I think that means she wants to save two, so that next turn she'll have five, so she can actually make an iron mine. Oh, but remember, she could upgrade. That only costs three. Oh, okay. Wow. So many things you could do. We are now getting into... The realm of, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Let's see, but I know one thing. Jen has decided she wants to maintain her military superiority because she's put a military card in here that she wants to benefit from. And chances are, I mean, I put in two, so there's a good chance I've done them as well. So Jen, I think, is going to redouble her efforts. And what do you know? Booyah! That swordsman is only one. First thing she's going to do is she is going to spend one action to get a new technology. Swordsman. Okay. Now I was thinking about getting that, well she's got the iron. Oh, but see, it cost her three ideas and now she could train swordsmen. But that would put off iron for quite a bit longer because she put her time into religion instead of philosophy so she's really slow on the uptake. But nope, it's all about the military for her. So Jen's second action is 
This is the first time I think we've done it. She is going to, she took a card. Uh, which one is it? She is going to, you know, if we played action cards, she is going to put a technology into play. Alrighty. Um, bah, 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 bah. This requires, it doesn't require goods, it doesn't require people, it requires ideas. To learn the arts of swordsmanship requires three ideas. One, two, three, and she's all the way back down to one. So the iron mine is going to have to wait for a while. But we put this up here to indicate now that on her infantry, she can still train warriors. Warriors cost two ore to train, and they, they have a value of one. Or she can train swordsmen, which require three, or, uh, three, and I have a strength of two. So that cost her three ideas, and now her warfare has increased. And now I think she is going to spend one, two military actions. And those military actions, remember, they could, she could train more guys. She's got the ore. She could train more warriors. She could train more swordsmen. She's not going to do that. She's going to upgrade. She is going to upgrade these warriors, these antiquities warriors who are so ancient, nobody even cares about them. Uh, you know, because they, they only do one damage with their old bronze swords to medi medieval era swordsmen with great training and big old shields and awesomeness. And now, <clears throat> it would cost her three per to, to train a guy, but to upgrade, the difference is two, so it only costs her two ore to upgrade two warriors to swordsmen. And now that means Jen's military might has increased, since she is now two instead of one, her military has gone up one, two, and she is top dog in the Middle Ages, because she's got, you know, whatever, what is this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two ninths of her, almost a quarter of her population devoted to swordsmanship. All right, and those were her two military actions. So finally, we're using military actions for something other than drawing cards, hooray. All righty, she, and she's still got three regular actions, but unfortunately, it's gonna take her a while to get this iron. She's still got plenty of this. Action number three, spend some food, get another dude. Action number four, Train this dude in the fine art of philosophy. Now that costs three ore, so that's the rest of Jen's ore. One, two, three. But she now has a second philosophy, which means Jen is now gonna start earning ideas to a turn instead of one. So she'll get back up to that iron fast now, but she had to invest to do it. So that's pretty nice. And now she's still got two actions left over because she did so much military stuff. But she has no more bronze, so she can't really build or upgrade anything. Uh, she doesn't have enough ideas to play this. Homer's already in play. Let's put that over there as a reminder. So I think she's going to use these last two actions to draw some cards. Either one single or, you know, one double card or two singles. Bountiful Harvest. Oh, remember how this came out and it was oh, so good for three? I didn't think Jen's going to take it for one. How could she not? She's going to spend one to get that. Nice, nice, nice. And... Um, an efficiency upgrade, which lets her upgrade a farm, mine, or urban. So when she upgrades her, um, her, 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 when she gets iron out, she'll be able to upgrade for cheaper. So those are her two. Uh, and again, she's ignoring wonders altogether. Jen and I are going for very different philosophies. Okay, that was the end of her turn. She used all six of her actions. So now, her culture, she is a very cultured, warlike society. She's got three points. One, two, three. She has caught back up to my events and artworks that I've done. She gets one, two science, so she is screaming right back up to the top. And now she generates goods, two for her farms, one, two, three for her bronze. Still, she's almost to the point, one more higher, and then she's gonna start having to consume goods, but that's a next turn. And so she, no corruption, no consumption, in return, she used her military so she can't draw any cards, my turn. Ah, uh, the university, it's gone. Code of Laws is still around though. And what's new? Drama, once again, drama, which is a very, very nice thing. And wasn't there, oh yeah, Michelangelo plus drama equals points. Printing press. Frederick Barbosa. Let's see, for one civil action, this is after I played him, so I have to use an action to activate him, I can increase my population by one worker and build a new military unit with it. So I can build military units for free, oh wow. I think Jen has found the leader she wants to replace Homer with. Because, you know, she can build these swordsmen for just one action. This, or no, it costs you one food less and one less than normal. So it still costs, but it's cheaper to increase your military. So that would benefit both of us. And finally, warfare. 
the science of warfare. Add plus one to your strength and one to your military, and you gain one military action. Oh, so you'd get another, what do you call it? Um, pip, permanently. Nice. All right, but anyway, so that's new stuff out. My turn. I got some cards to play. And unfortunately, I was all excited, but still, I'm going to have to discard cards if I don't do them. So what do I want to put in? Uh, I don't want rats. That just hits everybody. I don't want to be smart enough. I'm just going to, eventually that will get discarded when I, in fact, actually it will. I've got four cards. I'm only going to be able to play one of them, and my limit is three, so I'm going to have to discard a card. I'm going to discard these rats. They're gone. No one's going to get hit by rats. So do I want to play border conflict or immigration? Weakest civilization, if that's me, I'm running the risk because Jen's ahead of me now, and she can make swordsmen. But she's not much ahead of me. One warrior, and we're tied. Uh, let's see, the weakest civilization loses an urban building, which would be very painful, or civilization with the most... Ah, this is all nice. Let's just make this a nice one. Oh, and in fact, it's happy faces. Jen's ahead of me on happy faces, but she doesn't know this is going in. And if I bend my will to it, I'm going to get a happy face for my great wall. Ew, yeah, I'm going to put that in. Okay, boom. I score one point. And the final antiquity thing happens. We finally, halfway through the Middle Ages, develop science. Each si civilization scores two science. One, two, one, two. And that's a big boon for Jen. She'll get to that iron. Oh my gosh, she'll get to the iron next turn. Okay. And now that this is empty, all our future events, got to put this down, get shuffled. So Jen knows one of them. I know three of them, if I can remember. And they get shuffled, so nobody knows what order they're going to come in. All righty, I'll shuffle some more. And down they go. Boom. Next event is going to be, well, it'll be interesting. We'll see what it is. All right. So, and I remember I, I still had three cards, so I had to discard a card. I discarded rats, and now it's my turn as per usual. All righty, what am I going to do? I want to finish my Great Wall. I haven't even started my Great Wall. Oh, but I got all my actions back. Now, I got a lot of resources. Do I have nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could almost finish this Great Wall right now. Let's get working on the Great Wall, shall we? One action to spend two resources. One of them goes on the marker. One of them goes back. And plus, I got to get rid of these if I want to get rid of corruption. I don't want to be corrupted. Oh, I should, I'm going to hire another guy so that I don't stockpile too much food. That cost me two food. Oh, but now I'm running out. I only have four actions. Ooh. Oh. Plus, I really want to get this mineral deposit. So I think three, I'm going to pick up this mineral deposit so next turn I can get more good so I can finish my great wall. That leaves me with one more non-military action. Four, it will be to spend two more orcs. I need two more to build the second stage of the great wall. And now all I've got is military left. You know what? I'm going to do a military action, and I'm going to train this guy to be a warrior, which costs me two resources. And that increases my military, and so Jen and I are tied on military again. Even though she's got swordsmen, you know, two swordsmen against three warriors and the Colossus, it all evens out in the end, doesn't it? Okie doke. So those are all my actions. I've still got one more military. I could actually hire a fourth warrior. I have enough left over. But I, I, I want to save. I want to keep my goods so I can finish the Great Wall. Because that will, well, it won't increase my military, but it'll do the happiness. And remember, I know happiness is going to be important. Happiness could come up right now. It could come up on Jen's turn. <gasps> and then I wouldn't have gotten my happiness. Oh, my gosh. Well, oh, I didn't think about this. Oh, I should have put the border conflict in instead. Oh, geez. And in fact, here's the thing. Right now, Jen and I are tied. If this first thing that comes up is a strength issue, since Jen and I are tied, the tiebreaker is whosever turn it is. So, if this, whatever this is, if Jen, and I, I know, I don't know what Jen's got, but I know that she's got some military cards. Now, unbeknownst to me, she's only, she doesn't have any events, so she's not going to be able to play an event. So, I don't know that, but I am worried that Jen might play this. So maybe I do use a bit more so that I'm in the lead on military in case, you know, the colony comes up or the, or the war thing comes up that I had to put in there or whatever she put in there. But if it's a colony, remember, I've got the bonus point and the bonus point from the Colossus. And I really want to save my stuff so I can work on the wall. But it's a gamble. I, oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Okay. 
So that means my other military action, I'm not going to train a guy. I'm instead just going to, okay, I'm not going to do, I'm going to pass on this last military action. At the end of the turn, like always, my culture only earns me one point a turn, unlike Jen's. My science only earns me one idea a turn, unlike Jen's. And let's see, I generate two more food, and I generate three more bronze. And again, I'm getting close to corruption, but not quite. And um, so I don't have any supply issues or any of that stuff. And that was the end of my turn. Oh, wait, no. And I draw a military card. What is it? Reign of Terror. The weakest civilization loses one population. Mm, all right. All righty. Okay. And, okay, Jen's turn. So first off, irrigation. Oh, that would have been such a wonderful upgrade. But nobody took it. Ah, I should, oh, should I? Ah, whatever. You can't take everything. You got to pick what you're going for. And I don't know if it's smart, but my thing is just all about getting those wonders out. And keeping up on military instead of you know abandoning it. It's perfectly reasonable to abandon military. To say, you know what? Whatever events come out, boom. Good for them. I spent my time on other stuff besides military. All right, anyway. So Genghis Khan, which is obviously a military leader. A revolutionary idea. Tor Scorchu Science and the Taj Mahal. Oh, that could be my third wonder. Oh, because it generates three culture. Of course the Taj Mahal would. It's wonderful. All right. Anyway, so those came out. It's Jen's turn. Jen would very much like to play a military card right now, because you'd score a point, it would make this happen, and she would break the tie, because since we're tied, it's happening on her turn, but again, she's just got these stupid tactics cards. Bad luck, so she skips it, and I'm like, oh, I gambled wisely and won, I didn't need to increase my military. Moving on to her turn, what is she gonna do? She gets all her actions back. What is she gonna do, okay. Efficiency upgrade, so she's got these two actions. She really wants to get the iron going. And she's got the five. All right, she's gonna, she is gonna learn the fine art of iron mongery. That takes, first of all, costs one, one you know, action to do it, and five ideas. So boom, all of her science is back down to nothing. And now this becomes an upgrade for bronze. So she can make an iron mine for five, or she can upgrade one of her bronze mines for three. Okay, so she could actually upgrade. She has enough bronze to upgrade. Alrighty. That was her first action. Second action, I believe she will... Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, remember, she has the efficiency upgrade. So normally it would cost her three, but this is only actually only going to cost one. So her second action she will be to play the efficiency upgrade. And what so she plays this, it'll get discarded. Upgrade a farm, in this case a mine, or a building, and pay two less. So she's gonna upgrade a mine. Normally, five minus is three, only costs her one. So it costs her one. And now, she will generate one iron and two bronze at the end of the turn. And unfortunately, with only two, she can't afford to upgrade anything else, but she does have two left over. She's got two more actions. I think she wants to get back in the lead on military. So she's going to spend one action. Or no, first of all, she's going to spend one action to... Oh, interesting. She, she's going to spend two food. Spend action, two food to increase her population again. And now she's crossed the line. Her people are going to start consuming food. But fortunately, they're happy enough so she doesn't have to worry about unhappiness. Then she's going to spend a military action to train this person. Ah, oh, but she needs three. She could spend two which she will, so spend two, to train him to be a swordsman, even though she, or a, a warrior. She can't afford another swordsman, but she can't afford a warrior, and that increases her military by one. She is top dog on the military race again for whatever events might come about. And she's still got two actions. Uh, I don't, let's see, no more resources. She's, she's gonna use this to draw a card. And so what's she gonna do with her last action? I guess she's gonna draw, uh, gonna draw let's see. Alchemy. She could upgrade. She could upgrade her philosophy labs to alchemy labs and get her science even faster. Maybe it's time for the theocracy or a work of art and just get five points. You know what? I think she's going to go for a theocracy. Her last action is to draw this card. It goes in her hand. She is either going to need seven ideas or two ideas, if, depending on whether it's a violent overthrow or a peaceful evolution of her despotism to theocracy. All right, so those are her turns. That was her last action. And now at the end of her turn, her culture, once again, lets her get one, two, three points. Her very smart science lets her get two ideas, and she generates stuff again. Two more food from agriculture, and now one iron, which is worth two resources, 
and two bronze. So you can see these upgrades, they also are more efficient so you don't have to worry about corruption as fast. So Jen's got one, two, three, four goods for next turn she can build with. She still hasn't hit corruption or, oh no, consumption. She now has to pay one of her food. After she grew her food, she had to pay one because to feed her population. So she's got three food left over, okay. But that's still enough. Ah, and interestingly, she's crossed the line. Now to hire more people, it would cost her three food to expand her population more. Things are getting more expensive for her. All righty, but anyway, so she did all that. It's the end of her turn, my turn now. Alchemy and the work of art are lost. Ah, oh. and Michelangelo and Joan of Arc will soon be lost. And new stuff comes out. Knigets. This is interesting for Jen. If Jen gets this ability, then she can start training cavalry, and then these cards, these tactics, become more interesting. I think Jen is definitely gonna want those knigets that say knee. Cartography, which increases, she increases her military and her colonization, and masonry, which makes it easier for her to build stuff. Those are just big ideas. Okay, and it's my turn now. First thing, of course, is uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to discard a card, so I gotta put one of these in the pile. And now here's the thing, Jen is ahead of me in military. So if I put one of these in and I make this happen, Jen might get it. But if I don't, I'm just gonna have to discard something. So I think I'm gonna put one in anyway. And let's see, the weak civilization loses one population. Honestly, I'm not that worried about that. Well, no, I mean, losing a population can be bad because if I lose this population, then all of a sudden, I have crossed the happiness meter. But my, uh, so what do, I, what do I have to worry about losing? Losing this? I lose a building. Oh, that's super painful. I, okay, I'm going to put a Reign of Terror in. She scores me one point. I've, I've set up the, the stage for a Reign of Terror sometime in the future. Perhaps it'll coincide with Jen's Theocracy. Who knows? But anyway, so now we pause while develop territory. It's time to colonize. The game goes on hold, and Jen and I now engage in, an, in a military auction. I am the first player. So I have to make the opening bid of how many of my units I want to, to sacrifice to conquer this region. If I conquer this region, I will immediately get three ideas. But I've got a lot of ideas. I could actually start, I could get drama, wow. So three ideas. I already have a lot of ideas. So, but I also will increase my population by one and increase so, mm, all right, so anyway. So that's what it is, whoever wins it. And this is a back and forth bidding until somebody stops raising, you know, when you bow out, you're out of the bidding. Eventually somebody bids the highest. And let's see, so what do I got here? Now remember, I have plus one, thanks to Colossus. So I could bid all three of my warriors and say, I'm gonna sacrifice all three of my warriors to develop this thing. But then if, 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 I, if it comes, when it comes due, I, because of my Colossus, I really only have to give up two of them because I have a bonus. And if I want to, I could only give up one because I've been holding onto this card for a while. What the heck, let's say, yeah, I'm gonna start with a bid of three. And Jen says, wow. So now Jen has to raise me. Let's come over here. Now unfortunately, Jen doesn't have any bonuses. Homer doesn't help her with colonization. She hasn't gotten her armies out yet. So this is all she's got. She's got two swordsmen and she would have to go to four. She could do it. She could give up, she could say, I'll bid four, and that means she would sacrifice both of her swordsmen. They would just be removed from the game. They'd come back over here, <sighs> they sacrifice both swordsmen, but she'd be able to raise me. Now this guy doesn't really help much because she has to raise to four. So she couldn't say this guy is two and this guy's one, that would only be three. She has to raise to four. Is she gonna do that? She is not. She does not want to give up her swordsmen. So she passes, I have done it. I get the developed territory for three. However, I get a bonus because of the Colossus, so it's really only two I have to pay. But now I reveal this card I've been holding on to forever. I have a bonus, so I only have to give up one dude. He comes back over here, so I've still got two warriors. Now that means after it's all over, my military strength is dropped by one more. But I have got a developed territory. So I am the smartest man in the land. Or I've got so many big ideas. And I increase my population. This comes from out of the game, from off the box. And my consumption. So I can generate more goods now for the rest of the game. This was an instant thing. And now, in, in the full game, Jen could take this territory from me, and then I would lose these bonuses, but I wouldn't have lost that. But anyway, so 
That was a colonization action, and I won! Even though Jen was, let's see, actually let's double check to make sure our military is correct. I've got one, two military might, plus, uh, let's see, no, I haven't built this, three. So I've got three, that's correct. So Jen is much stronger than me. So I did give up quite a bit to get it, and now these things, Jen's gonna benefit from them. But I got a colony, I'm super smart, I can start, I, I think it's time for me to start doing some to building, to learning how to do drama or learning how to do the printing press so I can start earning some points. Yeah. Or heck, Knigget's, I could learn Knigget's too. Or these blue cards, which are the special things. I could learn the, the science of warfare or the science of, ooh, well, anyway. Right, anyway, and it's my turn. I'm gonna have to figure out what are these things I'm gonna do. So anyway, that was my event. And my event triggered a colonization phase and so then this goes back into my hand. This is, and th these, are, these are the cards in my hand. And I've now got a colony, along with a leader and a wonder. And I'm gonna fin I think I'm gonna finish this wonder this turn. Am I? Yes, I am. Oh yeah. Let's get her done. First of all, first action, building the third stage of my great wall, which unfortunately costs me three bronze. One, two, three, because I'm not smart enough to make iron yet unlike Jen. So, and one of them comes over here. Second part, I'm gonna spend my last two bronze. One comes over there. And ta-da! All these things now come back to my stock. So, again, I don't have to worry so much about the, whatchamacallit, the... And I have a great wall. So, my culture increases by one. So I'm gonna start earning a point. My happy face increases, ah, remember, I put a happy face in here. Jen and I are tied on happy faces now. And add one to my strength for every infantry and artillery units. I have two infantry, so my strength just went up by two more thanks to the wall. Anybody I put up on that wall gets a bonus. And so Jen and I are tied again. Thank you, Great Wall. Oh my gosh. Everybody loves me. And I develop territory and Moses. All right, so I've still got some actions. What am I going to do? Remember I have all these big ideas. I think it's time to start using them. I am going to spend an action. Do I want a printing press or drama? Or do I want to spend two and get the art of warfare? <sighs> the art of warfare only takes four ideas. And it's an instant gain plus strength to my military permanently. And I have an extra military action every turn, which really for me, I think means drawing more cards. I'm not excited about that. I think I want, let's see, if I, for me to build another wonder, now, it will cost me whatever, you know, this wonder would take, take three actions to get it, plus two additional ones. To build a third wonder is going to be expensive. But wait a minute, wasn't there a, one, wasn't there a leader who would make it cheaper for me to get them? No, it wasn't. Oh, but remember, Michelangelo was a cool leader. Yeah. My, uh, I don't have any temples, but my theaters produce. Uh, for a half case. And it takes one less. Oh, yeah. My, okay, my third action will be to take this into my hand. Soon... I forgot about Moses. If I've not been using him, if I've not been expand, I think I've forgotten about Moses. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be re replacing him late, pretty soon with Michelangelo. That was my fourth action. And now, unfortunately, that means my drama, which is what I want because he benefits temples or theaters. Oh, I could have saved. I could have waited till next turn to finish the Great Wall. And then I could have picked up my drama and my Michelangelo. But you know what? Another theater is going to come out. And in the meantime, I could build temples because he benefits temples too. All right, I think that means I'm going to go into the temple business. All right, so I'm done. Those are all my actions. I've still got two military actions, but I, can't, I don't have enough to train, so that's it. I'm, I'm really afraid I've forgotten to use Moses, but whatever. Well, that probably means I have a little bit more food than I thought. But you know what? I'm so overloaded with food. In fact, that's actually a problem. I am really need to start hiring more people because otherwise... I'm going to start getting corruption because I'm stockpiling all this food. But anyway, end of my turn. I generate two culture now. One, two, oops, one, oopsie. One, two points. And I generate still just one idea. I am this. Oh, look at all these ideas we've got. Food, more food. Bronze, only still three bronze. I've built these things only with bronze. That is amazing. And still no corruption, still no consumption. End of my turn. Oh, and then I draw two military cards. Rebellion and Uncertain Borders. These are events that'll be, I'll feed next turn. Okay, Jen's turn. Drama and Joan of Arc go away. I think she was really interested in Joan of Arc, but it's gone now. 
Oh, wait, no, no, Joan of Arc was not that good in a peaceful game because it gave you a big bone. It really protected you from being attacked. St. Peter's Basilica. Iron. Jen already has it. Alchemy. Okay. Now, you know, there's one thing I haven't mentioned. I think I pretty much covered almost everything. I don't think I'm going to be able, because I'm at 45 minutes. I'm not going to make it to the end of this deck. Basically, when we get to the end of this, any cards that are still in my hand pretty much go away. Any uncompleted wonders go away. Any old era leaders go away. And they have to be replaced by era two leaders. So things get lost due to antiquity. The, you know, the teachings of Moses, the teachings of Homer, the teachings of Michelangelo. If I haven't put them out by then, they'll all be forgotten. And, uh, oh wait, actually, is that true? Will Michelangelo be forgotten? I forget. Let's look at the end of turn action, shall we? It only happens. End of an age. There it is. Alrighty. When an age following, uh, cards still in hand, leaders. Do not forget to adjust indicators. So I guess it's whatever leader it is. Some cards previous age uh, become obsolete. All right. Um, wonders under construction and packs, which aren't in the friendly version of the game. So, oh, and then also, if you're playing the full version of the game, I'm playing the advanced version of the game, but in the full version of the game, when an age ends, they're all right here, I forgot. Uh, last card comes up. Discard your leaders, your wonders under construction, your cards from your hand, and your packs, and return two yellow workers to the yellow worker bank. So at the end of an age, in the full game, two of these go away, which could hit you, and you start getting disgruntled workers, which might mean um, a rebellion. And basically what a rebellion means is, if you have a rebellion, you don't generate anything. You don't generate food, or goods, or points, or ideas. You just pretty much spend the whole time being dealing with a rebellion. So you gotta keep your people happy the more it gets out there. So that happens at the end. The other thing I haven't talked about, in the advanced game, three, three third era things come out randomly. There's a whole bunch of them. And these are the targets we're trying to get to the end of the game. Bonus points in this game will be given at the end of the game for each level of government. Remember, Jen's going to upgrade to theocracy. And each special blue card. Neither of us have done it. So we've been ignoring that. But these blue cards are worth two points each at the end of the game. And um, you know, so is upgrading to better... So that's important. We need to be paying attention to that. Competition. We get one point for, so building up military is worthwhile. Every military unit we have at the end of the game is worth you know, a point per level. Agriculture. Getting to the point where we can generate a lot of food is worth points. And finally, architecture. Having a lot of urban buildings, which are labs, temples, arenas, and some other stuff. So those are worth points. So that's something we gotta be paying attention to in the back of our heads. You know, so Jen's going to be getting theocracy. We need to start grabbing some of these blue cards because they're worth. They, you know, they they benefit us all throughout the game in a big way, but they also help us in this game because of that. They bonus. So I think maybe, but I didn't grab the warfare. But you know what? Oh, I think I'm going to stop there because. But anyway, so that's something we need to be thinking about. We still need to be balancing, you know, our expansion, dealing with corruption, consumption, making people happier, trying to stay ahead on military for all these events that come out because most of them will benefit you if you're stronger. Not all of them, but most of them. And, um, you know, trying to get more culture in any way we can. And then on top of that, if we were playing a mean game, also events could, we could play events where we would attack each other and raid each other and steal stuff and, and declare wars, which basically last over you know, multiple turns for all intents and purposes and take a while to be you know, resolved and a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm going to stop there at 50 minutes because I'm pretty sure, well, except for, and, and Dob is trying to make a space for herself. She loves sleeping in a cave. She loves, you know, she, she's trying to, there she goes. Uh, now she can take a nap hidden underneath our pillows. Every time we come back and we're out, we, our pillows are spread all over everywhere because Dob has had to take a nap in her cave that she had to make. Sorry, I'm stopping there because I pretty much demonstrate everything except, I was hoping I'd make it to the end of the age, but clearly we got a long ways to go. And then the second age would start where patriotism or, you know, the Transcontinental Railroad comes out and new events like uh, immigration and the Independence Declaration start coming out. And, you know, better bonus, you know, so everything escalates, everything gets bigger, and it's really in the next stage that we really need to be focusing on these bonuses. Now in a full game, it's interesting, in a full game we don't have the bonuses declared for us. These are just level three military cards we get. And so we can, we can get them in our hand, we can 
play them whenever we want to score the points right then instead of at the end of the game. And if we put them in the queue, they will score at the end of the game or when they come up that way. So in a full game, it's much more interesting how the bonus points get scored. But in, a, in an advanced game, it's very straight simple that we have these four randomly generated bonus things that we're searching for over the course of the game. But anyway, that's it. I've demonstrated pretty much, I think I've talked about just about everything. Oh, I haven't, well, basically, I, I mentioned what um, having a revolt does. I've actually demonstrated a colonization thing. Let's see, the next event would have been science breakthrough. Hey, everybody, and oh, that would have been, Jen would have scored three, um, so even though I put this in, it would benefit, benefit Jen more because she's scientifically stronger than me. And then we would have had immigration where whoever was strongest and we're tried right now in military. So it would have been whoever drew, no, it's happy faces. And we're tied on, so again, we're tied on happy faces. So whoever drew this card as a military event would have gotten a free increase in their population. And then finally, we would have gotten down to the Raiders, where again, whoever drew it, because we're tied, would have gotten the benefit or avoided the penalty. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm done, okay. We can go to final thoughts now. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, everybody. In five, four, three, two, one.